of kings. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. I don't know about you, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I know the Spirit of the Lord in this, in this place. If you come with an expectation and an open heart, I believe you're going to receive your blessing. Let us worship together. Praise God. Let's clap our hands. Hallelujah. How many want the Holy Ghost to rain down on us today? Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Burning my soul, back 
the glory begins to come down. Come on, let the glory come down today. Hallelujah. God, I lift up praises. I lift up praises. I lift up praises. I want the mighty wind to blow through this house. Oh, let your fire fall on us today. Hallelujah. 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 Let your Holy Spirit rain, 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 rain.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God will surprise you. God will surprise you. Even when you don't see it, even when you don't know any way it can happen, God will surprise you and turn things around. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Testimony, yeah? Absolutely. Another testimony. Amen. <laughs> so we got a, uh, I got some, me and, me and some buddy of mine, uh, we're at a, uh, uh, sober living, right? Or, yeah. Sober living, and, uh, man, we're just, we're just getting busy. And this is taking. Yeah. Jesus. He's shaking up the house. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, uh, just, I want to get to you to pray for uh, my relatives that they have an Acts 238 experience and all our guests that the Lord would bless them. Amen. And uh, amen. a big part of uh, what Gustavo was talking about, Gustavo got filled with the Holy Ghost this week. Amen. 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 There's changes in her life that's going on, and, Jesus. and with that, difficulties and challenges that have Thank become you, a little bit um, more advanced. I guess the word I could use. So I'm believing God. God is a God. Hallelujah! Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. This is our prayer. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's take these knees before the Lord this morning. God, we pray that you would touch in every situation, Lord. Every situation, Lord God, in every struggle, God, we pray that you will touch. Lord God, we thank you, God, for what you've done already in this service, Lord God. And what you have done and you continue to do it, Lord. We worship you, Lord God, and we thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. The doors that you're breaking, the chains that you're breaking, Lord God, the things that you're turning around. We worship you and we thank you this morning, Lord. And God, we pray that you will come and touch with you, Lord God. Wherever he's at, we pray for your salvation, Lord God. That you will draw him back, Lord. You see where he's gone, God, and I pray that you will bring him back, God. To this truth, Jesus. Lord God, we pray for other relatives and guests, Lord God. And we know, Lord God, our family members, God, you will bring them back. Lord God, bring them to you, Jesus. And help them understand where they're at, God. We pray that you will reach them, Lord God, and bring them here and touch them, Jesus. Lord, we pray for family, Lord God. All our family members that are lost and gone astray and don't know this word, God, we pray that you will move, Lord, and that you will draw them to you, God. Touch them, Jesus. We let them when you can, God. We pray for Soraya this morning, God. That you will touch her, Lord, as she's getting older, Lord. Give her direction, Lord God. Speak to her, Lord God. We pray she will touch her, Lord God. Draw her closer to you, Jesus. How we're going to hold of you, Lord God. We pray she will touch her, Jesus. God, we pray for Ollie, Lord God, that you will heal her, Lord. God, you see the situation, God. And God, I pray she will heal her right now, Jesus. We pray for healing, God in her body right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for all the miracles you've done, all the things that you've done for us, Lord God, the revival we're seeing, Lord, the chains that we're seeing being broken. We thank you for all of it, Lord, and we know you continue to move, Lord. We worship you this morning. We praise you in advance for all these deeds, Lord, because we know that you will move. We know that you will make a way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we worship you this morning. Thank you, God.
Praise the Lord, everyone. You may be seated. I, uh, I am privileged to stand in the house of God, a full house today. Love it. But we can worship God. I have some announcements to, to bring to you. When you get a little older, you learn to take your glasses off to read. I want to remind everyone, um, service animals, when they're wearing their harnesses, we don't want to pet them. Uh, they're trained to respond a certain way. We want to make sure we re respect that so that they can um, maintain their their job. Yeah, like I said last week, it's their job. So, right. you know, they're not getting, they're getting paid anymore. Uh, Scooby Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I keep doing stuff. I don't get Scooby Snacks. Oh, no. <laughs> seems, seems unfair. Okay. We have a ladies' oh. holiday fellowship on Saturday, um, December 2nd at 11 a.m. Yeah. When all the ladies participate in that and if you uh, are participating in the secret sister bring your gift on that day they'll be exchanging gifts on that day uh, December 3rd is the church holiday celebration here at the church on Sunday we expect want to see everyone there we're going to have food and fellowship and a, a lot of fun remembering the birth of our Lord uh, if you have any questions see Sister Johnson or, or my wife Sister Mary uh, on December 9th men's uh, Christmas get together uh, we want to get all the men together to uh remember Christmas and on December 24th there'll be a candlelight service here at the church okay, let's just worship God uh, and thank him for all the things he's done for us praise the Lord everybody praise, the Lord. praise God thank praise Jesus. God Hallelujah. well as I always say one of my Favorite times of the service amen, besides amen. beginning to the end. Tithe and offering. Yay. Praise God. Yay. I didn't get no excitement there. I said tithe and offering. Yay. I get excited because I know I know how the Lord yes. has been faithful. Right. Right. When we are faithful yes. in our giving, yes. amen. our sacrificial giving, amen. just like the lady in the Bible had two mites. Come on. That's like two pennies. Come on. It's less than two pennies. Come on. She gave all that she had. Right. Then you have the Pharisees who gave in big lumps of some, and they wanted everybody to see right. what they had right. given into this offering, right. uh, offering plate or whatnot. Right. But this, this woman was highly blessed and more favored yes. than they because she gave that all That's right. that she had. That's right. I don't think she had nothing in her bank zero and sometimes life can take us can be can be rough at times but know when you are faithful he will meet all your need praise God if we can please stand there's three ways we can give we can give a cash app dollar sign great CPC or uh, PayPal go to uh, great commission uh, PC.org and you scroll to the donate button there and whatever the Lord puts on your heart uh, just go ahead and uh, donate unto whatever the Lord puts on your heart and or you can come old school and give unto the Lord praise God let us go before the Lord Father in the name of Jesus Lord I pray God bless those God that are giving bless those that want to give but they can't give bless their finances so they can't give to your kingdom for the work of the kingdom Lord God, bless everybody in this house. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Be friendly, shake hands. And greet one another. Just send 
December 2nd. Um, we want everyone that wants to participate in the ladies and ladies um, fellowship, please come. You don't have to bring a gift. You know, we did the secret sister thing. We did that about, what, a week or two ago. But if you weren't here for that, that's fine. We still want you to come. Amen. We want all the ladies to come because we always have a lot Amen. of fun and food yeah. and fellowship. So we want you to come. Amen. If you did agree to participate in the Secret Sister, if you're not going to be able to make it for any reason, please see me or Sister Mary so that we can pick up your gift and make sure you get your gift. Because we don't want to be here and then everybody's opening presents and then because you couldn't make it, your sister's sitting like this. Yeah. While everybody else is opening their gift. Um, so we want you to, if, like I said, if something comes up, I know things happen all the time, unexpectedly. So if you can't be here, please see me, contact me, call me, do whatever you need to do, or Sister Mary, and we will make sure we can pick up your gift, and then after the, uh, it's over, we'll bring you your gift. But if you decided not to participate, it is not a requirement to come. We want all the ladies, everyone is welcome. Right. We always have a good time. We always Amen. play games, Amen. and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So if you can be here yes. next Saturday at 2 o'clock, I'm next Saturday the second at eleven o'clock. Please be here. God bless you. Now, do you missed it? But anyway, it's eleven o'clock. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I just want to yes. sing Thank something you, that God Jesus. has put in my heart years ago. Hallelujah. But I just you know, felt impressed to, to sing it this morning. You're always there to call on. And that means so much to me. When I lose myself, you're the one to find me. Your strength is made perfect. When I'm weak as can be, you give me Roll. 
always there And that means so much to me When I lose my sight You're the one to find me Your strength is made perfect I'm weak as can be You give me stand today. We're going to dismiss Sunday school out to my my left hand side. Hallelujah. If you're turning your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. preach to you something God's put on my heart this morning, and I trust that it will be a blessing to your life. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 11, and it reads like this, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord, which is God speaking to Elijah, the prophet. After Elijah had done some pretty incredible things, God used him pretty incredibly. But this is on the heels of a great threat that he received on his life after that. And so you had this mountaintop experience, spiritually speaking, and then in the physical, a very, 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 very low moment in Elijah's life. And this is what God says to him at a point when he stops to listen. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, tore the mountains, and break in pieces the rock before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, 
that he wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Let's put our Bibles down for a moment. And let's talk to, to the great God, the Ancient of Days, the one that loves us beyond more than we can even imagine. Father, we love you today. Thank you, Lord God, for the people that stand before me, Lord. I pray, God, that you would give me the words to say, God, and help me to convey what you've given to me in such a way, Lord, that it ministers to their hearts. God, that their ears are open to hear what you have to say, God, and that you're able, Lord, to bring some encouragement, to bring some confirmation. God, to speak in such a way, God, that it changes us forever. In your name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. And I want to preach to you from this title, An Agenda Bigger Than Mine. An Agenda Bigger Than Mine. You know, in this story of Elijah, you know, he's a, he's a unique person in the Word of God. He looks kind of normal. There's some things that he does that are quite normal. And certainly his feelings, his emotions that he, he, he expresses. And the Bible doesn't hide them. You know, the Word of God is something. He doesn't hide some things that, that you may say, well, if I was trying to tell a story, I'd leave that out. God doesn't do that. He leaves it all right there. And so Elijah, he comes onto the scene in, in the previous chapter previous two chapters before that, in chapter 17, the Bible says in verse number one, his exchange with Ahab, his first exchange here that is recorded in the word of God, the Bible says, Elisha the Tishbite, who was an inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. In other words, it's not going to rain until I say so. Wow. And he disappears. He gets out of there quick. God tells him to go down to the brook called Cherith. And God says, I want you to hide there at this brook called Cherith. And so he goes. God tells him, he says, I've instructed the ravens to bring you bread and meat. And that's how you're going to survive. But you know something, there's a very real, there's a very practical, there's a real element of whatever God does. I dare to say that the meat that those birds brought was not cooked. Yep. Right. Elijah probably had to cook that meat. Right, right. What am I saying? Well, sometimes we think that God's going to do everything for us. Right. And there's nothing for us to do. But in the real world, for you to learn, for you to understand, God's going to work and sometimes he's going to do miraculous things and then sometimes he's going to do some things and you have something to do about it too. Because after all, he is training. We're all in training. For the entirety of our lives, we're in training to respond. The Bible says in patience, possess ye your souls. And so this crucial element called patience is something you must get. I must get Paul lets us know that the way you get patience, he says the way that patience comes is through trials. Tribulation works patience. Patience experience. Praise God. There's something necessary in patience that God is going to allow tribulations to come in our lives so we get some more of it. Praise God. Things are connected in ways that we don't even know. Your patience in dealing with whatever you're dealing with has something to do with your salvation right. and how you're going to live for God and, and how you're going to perceive God. And, and God knows how all that stuff goes into the soupy mix to make the cake that he is making. He knows how all that stuff works together. All those ingredients, how necessary they are. So here's Elijah. He's at the brook, but the brook dries up. The brook that he's at where God said he's going to sustain him, dries up. And all of a sudden, it's like God's plan comes to a halt. No. No, 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 no. God's just changing his location. And it's for good reason. It's for something I never really saw before. So God tells him, hey, I got a widow I prepared for you that's prepared to take care of you. A widow. Does that sound appetizing or does that sound like a, you know, 
a macho man who wants to go to a widow. She doesn't have a husband. She's just barely making it herself. But this is who God's prepared. You see, you don't think like God thinks. I don't think like God thinks. But God says he prepared her. And when Elijah gets there, he doesn't find this lavish spread. Fields for days. Food aplenty. Big house for... No, he finds a lady that he sees. And God says, that's the one. He's like, okay, God. And he says... Uh, can you, you get me some water? And she goes to get him some water. It's just a little test. Right. <laughs> He's testing her. Right. She, so she goes to get the water. As she's going, he says, oh, by the way, bring back a cake. And, she, and then she stops. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Then he finds out her dilemma. She says, look, I have just enough of meal and, and cruise of oil to make one more cake for me and my son. We're going to eat, and then we're going to die. There's no more hope here. Mm. And Elijah was like, okay, God, that's the one. I get it. <laughs> Not like you and I think. Come on. Come on. But the Bible says Elijah didn't spoke the word of God. Yeah. God spoke through him. Yeah. He said, make mine first. You're another thing. I mean, who's, what man would, you know, you feel, you know, hey, it's a little, you want them to make theirs first. But this is before God. Yeah. 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 And this was her test yeah. as much of his, as it was his. But God told him something before he went down there. I have prepared her. Right, right. And sometimes your preparation, and when God moves, it's when you're at your very, how many times did God do that? The last minute. God does that. God prepared her so that the last minute when this proposition came to her, she would go, okay. 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 It sounds pretty good because this is our last cake. She had to wait out in her mind really quick. Last cake, we're going to eat and die. He says if I feed him first, we have a lot. Okay. So she takes it. And God blesses. But the next interaction that we have with this lady and the man of God, the Bible says God prepared her. Do you remember that in your mind? God prepared her. Because God knows the future, right? She needed a man of God in her life. Because God knew what was going to happen to her son. A few years into this thing, or a few months into this thing, her son dies. God knew that was on the agenda. He knew it was happening. And so he prepared this lady, gave her a test, because she was willing to accept it, which he knew she would be. Now she had the ready-made blessing miracle. She goes up to the man of God, but she didn't see that at the time. She's just being a lady. She's just being a mama. And she's hurt because her baby just died. And so she says to the man of God, don't play with me. Why'd you play with me? Or, you know, my emotions here. My baby's dead. The man of God doesn't, didn't know that was going to happen. But he's responsive to God. God prepared her. So he takes the baby, lays him up there on his bed. And the Bible says he stretched himself across the child twice. Right. Prayed for the child. Prayed for the child. And then his life came back to him. Yes. A miracle. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Because God is working his agenda. Yes. Yes. God is working his plan. That looks different from your plan. That looks different from everybody in this scene's plan. Nobody thought it would work out like this. Nobody thought this was going to happen. But God knew all along. Yep. And in your life, God knows. Even when you don't, God knows. Yes. God's already in your future. Yes. Praise God. And when God makes your when God makes moves in your present, it's because He's preparing for your future that He already knows. Yeah. You don't see it, I don't see it, we don't understand all, and we don't understand why He does what He does and how He does it. But I'm so glad that there's a day yes. that comes. All right, amen. That you can look back and say, Now I know why. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God is full of those kind yeah. of those kind of happenings that we can look back and say, now I know why. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You let me face that trial. Every right. painful yeah. step each mile. But you were with me all the while. Yeah. When I didn't know what I could say, I didn't know what I could do. Yeah. But I knew that you would pull me through. And I think Elijah had many of those thoughts because he trusted God. But even he. You know, life is a big, giant test. Yeah. Yeah. With right. a lot of quizzes yeah. in between. <laughs> 
Just because God uses something doesn't mean He's going to continue to use that. He's going to do. He does things differently. He's the one that's leading. The tabernacle in the wilderness kind of taught us that, because the Bible says that every time that that cloud moved, the priests had to be ready to quickly grab the ark and the tabernacle and all that stuff and start moving, and then all the tribes in their place behind them moving out, following the Spirit of God. And it's a type. Everything in the Old Testament was a type and a shadow of things in the New Testament. We have to be willing to follow the Spirit's leading. Right. 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 The Bible says that if, we're, if, if unless you have the Spirit, you're none of His. Yeah. God wants to be able to speak to us in real time. Yes. Right. Praise God. Right. In real time. Right. God wants to be able to give you a rhema word in real time. Yes. God wants to talk to you about what's going on in your life. Yes. You need yes. to hear the voice of God. Yes. It's not a static situation. God wants to talk to you. Yes. Praise God. God wants to fellowship with you. God wants to have a relationship where he's talking, he's speaking. He's giving direction. He's giving guidance in your life. Proverbs 18 and 9 says, A man deviseth or plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Praise God. Jeremiah and Jeremiah 10 and 23 says, O oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in him. In other words, the way you should go, the way I should go, it's not in me. It's not something we're inherently born with. Right? It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. The irony of the language there, you know, it's not in man that walketh. He's talking about our lifestyle, right? He's talking about the way we live, the direction that we go, right? But he says it like this. He says, it's not in man that walks. The man has the ability to walk. He admits that. But it's not in man that walketh to direct his steps or to go the right way. Walking, like I said, is, is, it's really speaking of life, how I'm leading my life. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof are the ways of destruction. If you saw a train wreck, if you saw a train that was slowly coming, going to a wreck, and you can see down the hill over there where there's a big wreck that's going to happen, you wouldn't jump on that train and go for the ride. You would avoid it like the plague. But God says when you look into the future, you look into a glass that is black, dark. You can't see. I need somebody that sees yes. leading my life. Amen. You know, the prophets in the Bible, they were called, this is, what, this is how people perceive them. They were called seers. Yes. Seers. Mm -hmm. Through the eyes of God, they saw the future and they spoke of it in prophetic terms. Praise God. I want my life guided by God. Many times, God changes things without telling us because he's sovereign. Right. That widow, the exchange of the widow, she had this miraculous thing happen in her life. And you have the people here in this story that are serving God in some capacity. Next person we come to is Obadiah. Obadiah is a prophet. And what he, Obadiah meets Elijah in the way. This is after that three years had come full circle. There's a famine in the land. God's taken Elijah from Brook Chair, where the water ran dry, the river ran dry, or the brook ran dry. And now he's taking them to this lady's house. But God is precise and accurate in what he's doing. God's doing this for a reason. So, Obadiah meets Elijah in the way. Elijah on purpose went to find him. Because now it's time for God to do something. The reason that the, the famine had happened, the reason that Elijah told him like that, is because they were not serving God. They were serving idols. Because Jezebel, it was a marriage that took place. Jezebel married Ahab. Je Jezebel was not from Israel. She was from another, you know, the, Sy the Syrophoenician lady, that whole Zarephath Aaron. She came from that area. She married Ahab, and she brought her gods with her. Gods of Baal. And all the things that God had told his people to stay away from, where they sacrificed their children, where they had all kind of orgies and things of that nature in their worship, their temple worship. All kind of things that God had forbidden his people from being a part of. Here they were bringing it to the fore because of Jezebel, wicked lady. And so God said, I'm going to shut the rain up to get their attention. 
And now it's time to turn the rain back on. So God tells Elijah to go meet with Obadiah and to, to begin to work on arrangements so he can meet with Ahab again and let him know that God wants to square this thing up. God wants to show that he's God. There's a lot of people that need to know that God's God. God wants to show this to the nation. And as Obadiah was in the way, in verse number 7 of chapter uh, 18, uh, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou my lord Elijah? And Elijah says, I am he. Go tell your lord or your master, behold, Elijah's here. And he said, What have I sinned? This is Obadiah's response. What have I sinned? That thou shouldest deliver thy servant into the hands of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he's not here, he took an oath of that kingdom or nation that they found thee not. In other words, he went searching high and low every country he could think of, looking for Elijah. Ahab did. You got to remember, he was international in his scope. His wife was not Israelite. She was from Zarephath. And so they were able to pan the globe or in that immediate area and find out if he was there. And God hid him in this widow's house. Sometimes God's agenda doesn't make sense to you until you know the other side of the chapter. Right, right. The other side of the, the coin, if you will. God was doing something. God was hiding him in plain sight. He was hidden there and... Uh, Really, it was in Jezebel's country. God was hiding him at this lady in Jezebel's country that he prepared. You see, the heart of Jezebel was so wicked. But somebody in her own country had a soft heart towards God. And God knew who that person was. And found her, took Elijah, and hid him there for all this time. Just amazing. But God wanted to set the agenda. God wanted to show himself to be mighty in front of all of Israel. So, of course, you have the, you know, Elijah on Mount Carmel. So the prophets of Baal, 800 of them, they get their thing up there and they, their altar is made. And uh, they begin to cry out to Baal to bring fire down and destroy it. And, of course, Elijah's joking. He knows it's not going to happen because there's no God. It's just, right. He's playing with them. Yeah. And they begin to cut themselves. They're there all day cutting themselves, all this stuff, and... These were Israelites, though. Wow. They knew the true God, but they were they had abandoned him to believe in something that was nothing, and God was trying to show them up. Yep. Right. And then Elijah prays a, about a 50-word prayer, and God destroys that sacrifice. And the water he engulfed it with licks it all, all the water up, and the fire falls, and everybody knows God is God, and they kill the prophets of, of Baal. Those 800 guys, they all get... Done. And it's a big celebration, rah, rah, rah. You know, he's, he's you know, he's on top of it. You know, he's, God's moved in such a mighty way. God's shown himself. And now the rain's about to fall. So he gets with Ahab, tells him, rain's gonna happen now. God's, you know, showed himself triumphantly over, you know, the prophets of Baal. And word gets back to Jezebel who wasn't there, that all your prophets had been killed. She is not even moved by what God did up there, because I'm sure that part of the story got back to her. But she's wicked and evil. And Jezebel sends a word. She sends a word through a messenger to deliver it directly to the man that God has used in this mighty way. He's seen God's mighty hand work. But Satan knows exactly how to get to you. Come on. He knows exactly how it's going to affect you the most. And so this word comes, and this is the word very solemnly. I'm going to do this to you in about 24 hours. Within the next 24 hours, this is going to happen to you. Your head's going to fall. Now, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense to, you know, when you compare everything. We have the, we have the luxury of looking back over the scripture, going through the story, through 
two, two chapters and seeing all those details and all this stuff, how it fits together. And it's a neat little thing to preach a sermon and all this stuff about somebody actually lived it. Yes. Here's a man of God mm -hmm. who lived this stuff. Yes. And he's being confronted with what scares him to death. But not just to death. It scares him into depression. That's good, Pastor. Elijah is sitting under a juniper tree. He runs. Here's this stuff. He, and he gets to the place. He's sitting under a juniper, juniper tree, just, you know, saying, Woe is me. And, and you know, my life is, is, is empty. I'm, I'm, you know, what have I done? And he's really feeling horrible and miserable and all this stuff. After God had just used him so greatly. But it's something else how you can, it's like coming out of one room, right? The emotions of that situation. The victory of that celebration. It's like coming out of one room. Leaving out of that room, shutting the door, then going into a completely different room. Because Elijah is completely different now. He is depressed. He is depressed. He feels isolated. Let me tell you something the devil loves to do to you. If he can isolate you. As long as there is some commonality between your problems, what you're facing, what you're feeling, what you're going through, as long as there's some commonality to, to other people that you can link to and see, yeah, they're going through it. And they're, yeah, what, once that happens, you, you know, there's... You, you don't, you can't in your own mind isolate yourself. Right. But if somehow he can separate you from the bunch, yeah, right. yeah. 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 as he did Elijah, yeah. nobody else, I'm not going after anybody else, Jezebel didn't threaten anybody else, I'm coming after you. Oh. I'm against you. And it caused Elijah to reevaluate everything. Even all the good that he did. He's, he's, you know, I'm, I'm by myself. I'm, you know, I'm the only person that hasn't, that hasn't bowed the knee to Baal. And everybody else, the whole nation. You know, God has just shown up the whole nation. And so there's going to be some changes, obviously, because people got to see God move in such a miraculous way. Right. Yes. But he's under the cloud of Jezebel. And he's feeling. Like a failure. He's scared. He's feeling that nothing he's done is worth anything. And if Satan can ever get you to that point, right. he'll make you stop. Yeah, yeah. But you don't just ever stop. There's this retracting. Right. There's this pulling yes. back. Yes. You know, because he never, ever, ever, doesn't matter what you do for God, he never feels that you're God's. He always thinks that if he does just a little bit more, he can get you. Right. He can bring you back. Mm. You now I know this is true. The Bible says that God allowed the messenger. Paul says this. He admits what's going on. He says, God, after he's done all this stuff, wrote all this stuff, said all this stuff, preached all these places, saw all these people get saved, God allowed the messenger of Satan to buffet him. That means to make him miserable. God allowed it. God allowed it. Why would God allow something like that? Because God wants to see you in heaven. Yes. Come on. And, and, and you know, there's no primrose path. Okay, it's going to be all nice through the tulips. And I'm going to go. I'm going to waltz right in heaven. No. There, you need the agitate, agitation rather of a trial. You need something's pushing against you. Praise God. And God giving you the victory. We go from victory to victory. As God is shaping and molding and making us. But God allowed the, the, the message. This is what Paul says. He says three times that I pray to God. Three times. And it's specific. It's not just about, you know, we don't really know what that was. But it's specific. He says three times. You think God, Paul only prayed three times in his life? No. Not a chance. He said, I speak in tongues. He said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. He's prayed every day. 
But about this particular thing, whatever it was, and I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm glad that God, God didn't tell us what it was. I'm glad he just kind of left yeah. it out there. Yeah. Yeah. But he says, three times that I prayed, and God came back and told me, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't move it out the way. He left it there. Yes. Amen. And then he says, you know, Paul says, God will never put more in you than you're able to bear. Right. But with every trial, temptation, he'll make a way of escape yeah. so you'll be able to bear it. Come on. Yeah. Praise God. God. But here is Elijah sitting up under. You know, it's almost like, you know, if, if a psychologist or psychiatrist would diagnose him, they would say that he's bipolar. <laughs> because he's experiencing this super high. And now, and you can tell he's experiencing it super high because he's so giddy up there on the mountain. Joking with them. The prophets of Baal teasing them, making fun of them and all that stuff. And now he's at rock bottom saying, woe is me. Not even thinking about what he accomplished. And this is the man. I, I wanna, I'm gonna just, this is a man that's unique in the word of God. Because it's him and Enoch that never saw death. Shortly after this, God deals with Elijah. But shortly after this, Elijah is taken in a chariot of fire to heaven. He does not even see death. But here, God reveals, you know, God can just talk about all the nice and pretty things about Elijah's life and never show you this other side. But you need to know that there's a time that somebody was so used of God, was so down in the dumps. Because we all get there. And when, when we're down there, Satan wants to kick you and say, you shouldn't be here. But since you are, and he'll do that. But I'm so glad to know that a hero of the faith was down there. I'm so glad to know that somebody that loved God, that God used mightily, was down there. Even after he was used, he went down there. Come on. But how many know you you can't stay in the valley? Right, right. God's not gonna let you do that. He goes up to the mountain, to the cave, and and then he sees something. This is pretty come on. But there's the mountain rips rocks. The, the mountain, rather, was ripped. Rip means to rip. Can you imagine that power? Right. A mountain being ripped. Right. Says God wasn't in that. Mm -hmm. Then the earth beneath him shakes. You see, the more magnificent, the bigger, the more flashier, we kind of, you know, well, that's God. That has, you know, the, wasn't, he wasn't in that. Then it was a fire. God wasn't in that. Right. But then a still, small voice. The Bible says that God gives peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. Amen. And you know what the most peaceful thing Amen. when you're troubled yeah. is a calming voice. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. You know, when a psychiatrist has you under, they don't start screaming and yelling at you. <laughs> it's nice, calm tones. Right, right. Yeah. As they've reached inside. But God, in doing this, yes. began to speak to him. Yes. And this question he asked him, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? God knew. God's, God's reasoning with him. Right. And God goes on to tell him, I have 7,000 in Israel that have not bent the knee to Baal. Yeah. These are folks you don't know about. You're going about your business. Your world is only confined to what your two eyes see, what your ears hear, people that surround you. But I have 7,000 people that you probably don't even know. They probably know who you are, but you don't know them. And you are probably the motivation for them not bowing. Come on. That's good. And so God lets him know that there's something else going on. And then God begins to unfold this agenda. See, Elijah just saw the little bit that was in his life. He was listening to God as God said, do this, do that. God began to tell him what he was going to do. He was, after all, one of God's seers. And God began to unveil the future to him. Let him know what was going to happen. And he started preparing. And then in the next few days, this scene unfolds. It hasn't been repeated in the word of God it didn't happen before then, even into the New Testament. God takes this man 
that allowed himself to just be totally used by God. Elijah's unique in this way. And there's so much more of the story we don't know that brought him up to this point. You know, he gets to a certain pinnacle and God uses him. It's like a flash in the pan. And then God takes him to glory. I'm talking to people this morning. Some that are down. Some that are high up right now. Because life is like that. Nobody just lives up. Mm. There are times it's like that, but we all experience super highs and super lows. And sometimes the devil is instrumental in bringing on that super low. In Job's life, he was instrumental. He was the cause of it all. And God allowed it because God knew. You see, here's something that's incredible. God knew that Job would not relent. He knew Job wouldn't just give up. He knew that it didn't matter what the devil. This is, imagine this. God's standing by and saying, do whatever you want to do. He's not going to bow. He's not going to bend. He's not, he's not going to curse me. Do whatever you want to do. God wasn't doing it. This is important to know. Because when you get tempted, Satan will come alongside, cause the mess, and say, look what God let happen to you. You've been good to God. You've been, look what God's, and you know, he changes his voice. It's not, it's not some hideous voice saying, look what God. No. He makes it sound like, he makes it sound, you know, like it's, it's. but his whole thing is to get you to blame God. If you can blame God, right. he can put daylight between you and God. Right. And that's what he wants to yes. do. Praise God. God allows yes. the enemy of my soul to buffet me, to push me, yes. to prod. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Because God's unfolding his agenda. Yes. Yes. God needed Elijah to do certain things. And after this, the Bible says that, you know, He's an angel bakes some, some food for him. He eats that food. And now he's going on this strength on a whirlwind of an agenda. He's doing things in preparation for what God's about to do in his life. He has a total new vision, a total different understanding. He's motivated like never before. Because yeah, right. he knew yes. God's about to take me up out of here. Amen. And as we see the stuff in our world coming, converging to that end. Right. Things have happened that, like, I, I don't think they've happened before. And, right. and certainly not to the people of God, to Israel, things right. that are taking place right now. Yep. It, it's pretty amazing what's going on. Right. But whether it's a hundred years before God comes or tomorrow, right. I want to be ready. Yes. Yes. Come on. I want God to use me. I, you know, there's two things. There's two things that govern or shape or, or, or mold or make our, our outlook in life. Right. And that's the fact that I could die mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. or God could come. Come on. come on. Those two dynamics are what drives come us. On. That yes. keeps us in the middle. That keeps us working for yes. God. Yes. 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 That keeps us understanding yes. that the most important thing I do in life is the stuff that I do for Him. Yes. Only what I do for Christ will last. Yes. All these yes. things that we try to accomplish in, world, yes. in this world don't really matter. Right. Yeah. They do. They do. They're for our family. They're for our our, our people that we work with or for our nation and they, they have some there are some agenda items that we we fulfill but there's a bigger agenda yes, yes. than right. mine right. that I'm working for yes. Come on. Yes. I've got to be on that track Hallelujah. because nothing else matters yes. nothing else has meaning Come on. praise God unless I can understand that I'm working on a bigger agenda yes. somebody else's agenda it's not my agenda right right it's the one that created me. Yes. It's the one that knows my future. Yes. And if I allow God to lead me, if I allow God to, to put me where he's wanting to put me, right. if I allow myself to go through when things are rough, yes. when I don't understand, yes. when, I, when, I, when my spirit is down, because yes. Elijah certainly was here, his spirit was pretty down. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> we can never afford to be in a place that God can't talk to us. Yeah. Right. Because we've closed the door. Yeah. That's right. Come on. 
Praise God. God knows where everybody's at this morning. God knows where you've been. God knows the tears that you've cried, you've shed when nobody was around. Right. You may have a smile or a neutral face on this morning, but God knows where you have been. God knows what you've asked. God's heard those prayers. You know, when you pray, you toss things into the arena of possibility. Yes, yes. Amen. And God doesn't forget. You may forget and walk away, but you, 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 you made a request that took 10 years to happen. And God went to work the first day. Right, right. Amen. Hallelujah. And because you didn't see anything under the ground as that seed was unfurling, you said nothing's happening. But all along, what was necessary and needed was taking place. Praise God. Let's stand this morning. God's talking to somebody's heart this morning. God's reaching. God's speaking to you. God's resonating with somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody that's asked the question, why God? Not realizing that God was doing something bigger. That God had a bigger agenda that he was unfolding. These altars are open right now for somebody that needs to talk to God this morning. You don't need to talk to somebody else. You don't need to talk to a doctor. You don't need to talk to a psychologist. But you need to talk to God this morning. These altars are open right now for somebody that's saying, I got something. I've got to get off of my chest. I've got to talk to God. Hallelujah. He's here right now. The presence of God is here right now. God is speaking right now. God is moving right now. God's spirit is moving and tugging at hearts right now. God is saying something in lives. God is trying to show somebody. God's trying to convey his goodness to somebody. God's trying to let somebody know that even though it feels like the sand from underneath your feet is shifting, I'm still in charge. I'm still in control. I have an agenda. I have a plan and you're a part of that plan. You're not aimlessly wandering through life, but you're a part of that plan. You're a part of that plan. I'm working through you. I'm working in your life. I'm moving in your life. I'm doing something in your life right now. When you can't detect my hand, I'm there working. I'm there moving. I have a plan. I have a purpose. I have an agenda. There's a reason to it all. Hallelujah.